What are requirements? A starting statement might be that a requirement it is what is needed to circumvent a problem. But what is a problem? In an analytical context, a problem is something that prevents a business, or at a lower level, a business user, from achieving an objective. So, applying this to our first statement, we can come up with a reasonable description of a requirement. That is, something that is needed in order to meet an objective. Although thinking about the problem first might seem to be a little on the negative side, it does reflect the reality that users often find it easier to tell analysts about the difficulties and frustrations that they encounter, rather than to indicate what they believe is needed to remedy the situation. It is often believed that it is the job of the analyst to identify the requirements. Now this is something that analysts haven't always done very well, but this is not always the fault of the analyst. From the early days of computing, there have been countless instances of computer systems being over budget, late, not doing what users really want, and not delivering the expected benefits. There are many factors that contribute to this, such as poor project management, lack of standards, and so on. But one major contributing factor that is frequently cited is the problem of correctly identifying the requirements. It should be recognized at the start of any computer development project that it is essential to have a good, tight statement about terms of reference or a project initiation document, as it is frequently called. Now, this is not a lecture about project management. That is covered elsewhere. But all business analysts and systems analysts should familiarize themselves with the scope of the study. Scope is usually expressed in terms of business teams or functions that are to be included in the study and those that are to be explicitly excluded. But to comprise the scope, these business areas and functions must in turn be selected to be in keeping with whatever objectives have been defined for the project. This must be consistent with the business objectives that caused this program of related projects to be initiated, in line with some business-driven strategy. To stand a chance of understanding the context for a project's eventual set of requirements, it is absolutely imperative that the analysts familiarize themselves with statements about high-level business objectives, such as, the company plans to increase its customer base by 20% over the next five years. There are probably several strategies that the business may choose in order to achieve its objective. One might be to buy out a competitor and therefore hope to keep that competitor's customers. Another strategy might be to improve business processes so that existing customers receive better service and do not depart for competitors causing the business reputation to improve and attract even more customers. The analyst's project is at the tactical level. It is one of the many steps that are necessary to carry out any given strategy. The project objectives might be something like, to deliver an IT system to support sales teams by providing accurate and timely management information about previous contacts orders received, deliveries made, payments received, complaints, and their resolution. The analysts must understand the context and the background so that they can elicit and document as thorough a set of requirements as possible. Indeed, the first requirement, the statement of the project, is an exceedingly high-level requirement in its own right. So, we can see the concept of a hierarchy, or levels, with respect to defining requirements. We can show the business objectives are at the very top level, and understand that a project, which will encompass various IT requirements, is aimed at assisting the business to achieve a subset of these business objectives. What we need to do is collect a thorough and detailed set of IT system level requirements. 
However, users tend not to talk at that level, so it is usual to first collect fairly high-level statements of need and then gradually refine these, getting to a lower level of granularity. One good way is to find out about any critical success factors, or CSFs, that are relevant to the project scope. A CSF is something at which the business must excel, or at least be as good as its competitors, if it is to achieve those idealistic business objectives. Excellent customer service might well be such a CSF. It's all very well that a business quotes these wonderful CSFs, but it needs to know whether it is succeeding in the likelihood of achieving the CSF. This leads to the need to measure and yet another abbreviation, KPI. This is Key Performance Indicator. KPI is a term often bandied about in a business, and often people seem to think it's just about personal measurement. But no, it's about measuring whether the business will succeed to meet those CSFs. For the business analyst, KPIs are most useful. Learning about the KPIs used by the business can lead directly to requirements. Our CSF of excellent customer service would be measured by several different KPIs. What does excellent customer service actually mean? It means that customers like the experience of working with us. So how could we measure that? Perhaps in three ways. One would be to conduct a survey of customers and ask them to rate us. Clearly, this could lead to requirements about capturing and reporting on this data. That sounds like a reasonably high-level business requirement. Next, if customers like us, then they'll place further orders with us. And so another way of measuring that experience would be to record and report on repeat business, another business requirement. Third, if customers experience problems, then they take the initiative and complain to us. So we need to record complaints and produce reports on how quickly problems are resolved and hopefully show decreasing rates of complaint. Again, we have found another business requirement. These business requirements tend to be high-level and broad statements, but they so often imply the capturing, processing, and reporting of data. And that is where the analyst comes in, isn't it? So as soon as the analyst learns about a KPI, he or she is also finding requirements relatively early in the project. Then these business requirements will need to be broken down into specific atomic level IT requirements. A relatively recent innovation is the balanced business scorecard. The idea of this is that the business should ensure it has considered all of its critical success factors. Too often, a company will concentrate on the most obvious CSFs, which are often financial. Financial is one of the four aspects of what is effectively a strategic balance sheet for the business. The other aspects are customer, internal, and finally, learning and growth. The business should use these different perspectives so that stakeholders can agree what is actually meant by statements like excellent customer service, exactly what key performance indicators are needed, and thus what requirements exist. The perspectives answer questions like these. From a financial perspective, to succeed financially and have the resources to achieve our objectives, how should we be seen by our stakeholders and the financial community? From a customer's perspective, to achieve our mission, what do we want our customers to be saying about us? From an internal perspective, to deliver our services effectively and efficiently, what are the business processes at which we must excel? From a learning and growth perspective, how do we adapt to changing circumstances and conditions in order to change and improve and keep ahead of the competition? The balanced business scorecard approach will lead to the business identifying more critical success factors. This, in turn, means more measurement is required, that is, key performance indicators. 
More key performance indicators mean more requirements. They are now proliferating.